Hello, hello everyone. This is Mike at Play Favorites. We're a friendly neighborhood toy store located in beautiful Front Royal, Virginia. And at our store, we recently had a burping contest. But not just any burping contest. It was a creative writing burping contest. Now, I don't think a lot of people took this seriously, even though I sent out many newsletters and advertised it all over Facebook and Instagram. But a few people did, thank goodness. And today, I'm going to read you a couple of entries from our creative writing burping contest. And everyone who entered won something. All right, here we go. This is our first entry. It's called Elf Gift by Eva Schunk. Trevor Harner filled up another cup of soda and handed it to his niece. Only two more to go. The lights flashed, the music blared, the dancers, the dancers swirled, and the conversation grew louder. Trevor filled up the final cup, got a cup of water for himself, and headed to his table. He sat down and sipped at his water. Uncle Trevor, why don't you drink soda? Trevor was pretty sure that his, niece, that his niece's name was Lucia. Well, when I was your age, I freed an elf from a hunter's trap. And to thank me, boom, 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 we go back into a... Uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> they always do them in Family Guy. <laughs> a flashback. Now we're going into a flashback. Trevor landed on the cell floor with a thud, cracking his head against the wall. Pops! He heard the seven locks click and the four bolts slide into place. Escape attempt number ten was a bust. You'd think that saving someone's life would entice them to give you something that would help you, but all he'd gotten in thanks for saving the elf was parents holding him captive and doing their best to make him <clears throat> burp. A ruby fell from his mouth. He waited for the drone to come and collect the result of his burp. No drone came. Why, wait, was that smoke he smelled? Exploding orange crush? What were his parents doing? Trevor pounded on the door. He heard a crash outside, but the door didn't open. The pick! His parents had never found the pick he made. He rummaged through his pillow, strewing, strewing straw across the floor. Aha, he said, pulling the pick free. He inserted the pick into the locks, one by one. Five, four, three, two, one. Ow! His pick caught fire in his hand, causing him to drop it. It landed on the straw, starting a small fire. He scrambled to move the straw away. The fire died out, but the pick was destroyed. Now what? The brick! His parents never found the loose brick he had moved. He scrambled over to the far wall and pushed at the brick. It fell out of the wall, letting in smoke and ash. Yikes! He yelped. Trevor panted, then coughed. Smoke was filling the room. He tried to slow his breathing, but was too winded. He felt the all-too-familiar feeling of a burp coming. He stuffed it down and looked for some way out. He burped, and the gem rocketed out of his mouth, hitting the door. The wood fractured and the metal bracings bent. Huh, what if he... He glanced around the room for a cup of soda. None. He felt another burp coming. He stuffed it down, feeling it grow bigger. It burst from him before he could turn to the door. Instead, the gem hurtled at the wall, breaking through the stone and flying through the air, leaving a hole in the wall large enough for Trevor to squeeze through. Yes! Trevor stuck his head out the wall. He was on the second story, but he could make the jump easily. He squeezed himself through the hole as the door collapsed in, and the straw burst alight with flames. He reached for something to hold on to, but there was nothing there. Trevor fell. He twisted in the air and barely managed to land safely. Trevor heaved himself to his feet and ran away from the burning house. He heard the fire trucks and helicopters coming to put out the fire, but he didn't stop. He ran until he couldn't run anymore. Then he collapsed onto the ground. Well, hello again, a familiar voice said. Trevor pushed himself to a sitting position and looked at the elf in surprise. Where did you come from, he asked. Why, the trees, of course. Trevor glared at the elf. <sighs> what, the elf, what, the elf asked. The blasted gift you gave me. My parents locked me in a cell and made me drink soda so I would burp up gems for them. Trevor shouted. Ooh, that is unfortunate, the elf said, clicking his tongue. Trevor attacked him. Mercy, mercy, the elf cried. Take it off. Take off the, the, take off the gift, Trevor demanded. At once, at once, just get off me. Trevor got off. 
The elf waved his hands, looking nervous. Trevor burped. No gem. He slumped against the tree. Whew. Thank you again, he said. One thing's for sure, I'm never going to drink soda again. Trevor walked away from the table, holding several empty soda cups to refill. His wife caught up to him, glancing at the table of children, all trying to burp up a gem. She looked at, the, she looked at him accusingly. What did you tell them this time? That was a pretty cool story. Thank you very much, Eva Shunk. I enjoyed that a lot. The next one, and this is our final story, I apologize to the Pratt family. The entire Pratt family submitted stories of their own. Unfortunately, I left them at home, but I enjoyed them a lot, and I especially liked the picture of the woodland scene with the bear and the deer and the mother holding the baby in the cave house in the woods. I enjoyed that a lot. Thank you very, very much, and I'm sorry that I'm not reading your stories here today. This next story, Mr. Burp's Adventure, is by Graham Friedman. Freeman. I'm sorry, Graham Freeman. Now this one is five chapters long. Don't panic. They're not long chapters at all. <laughs> Prologue. Mr. Burp is a burp cloud from Burp Town. He has brown eyes, a green body, tan and red hat, handlebar mustache, and arms and legs. He is a good mummy with no wrapping, and his spirit brought him back to life. That's the prologue. And here is a picture of Mr. Burp from Burp Town, a good mummy with no body whose spirit brought him back to life. Chapter 1. One day, Mr. Burp was walking in Burp Town. He walked past the pyramid where he was buried. He shuddered. He did not like to think about that. He came to his house. He went inside. Chapter 2. The suspense is killing me. In his house, Mr. Burp sat down in the chair and thought and thought. He thought about his friends and relations, and then he thought about what he would do next. Then he had an idea. Chapter 3. Mr. Burp was walking to his friend's house. When he got there, he walked over to Mr. Cough and Mr. Sneeze's couch, sat down, and told him about his plan. His plan was simple. They would go to the pyramid and explore. Chapter 4. Oh, things are getting good. He and his friends set out, <coughs> oops, <laughs> set out for the pyramid. They walked and walked, and finally they arrived. Mr. Burp went up to the pyramid and knocked on the side. Suddenly, the side of the pyramid opened like a giant mouth, waiting to swallow them. Ah! Chapter 5. As they entered the pyramid, a huge mummy jumped out at them. Mr. Burp drew his sword and prepared for an attack. You can see a picture of the sword right there. Very fearsome. I wouldn't mess with that sword. It's even serrated. You could cut challah with it. Okay, here we go. So the mummy just lunged at Mr. Burp, and Mr. Burp drew his sword and prepared for an attack. The mummy roared at Mr. Burp. Roar! Mr. Burp slashed the mummy, and it fell down. They had won. Then they walked home. The end. Thank you very much, Graham Freeman. That was fantastic. I especially enjoyed the illustrations. Well, the whole thing was really great. Okay, Graham, for entering this contest and for writing us a short story, you get a regular but very, very awesome whoopee cushion. Now, Eva, I've got something for you. Everyone hang on. I'm going to go get her prize. Okay, we're back. Because Eva wrote a mega long story about a burp, she won a 17 inch large mega whoopee cushion. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Next time we have a creative writing contest, please send me your writing. I will read them and make you famous. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day. Toodles.